Hi. I feel too fat to make videos right now, but I guess it is what it is. I'm doing another lazy ass video just from my bed because I'm cold and I work a lot and I don't have to wear makeup for five more hours. We're required to have a full face of makeup at work and it's really itchy and uncomfortable and I hate being uncomfortable. And uh, I get worried about my skin too. Especially after getting older, it sucks. Anyway, I wasn't really sure what to make a video on today, but then I just thought, I want to talk about my cunt mom some more. Um, God, I'm trying so hard to take um out of my fucking vocabulary, but it ain't happening. My mom, there are a couple of things that I think that I should make clear in this video. Like... I cannot speak on behalf of everybody's mother. I cannot speak on behalf of all anorexics. As it's a very personal issue. Long, annoying pauses. I'm sorry. It's, um... I don't know if necessarily trauma leads to this. Or because, like, it could, I think it could be offset by anything, and anything can be trauma. However, I don't, the thing about trauma and people with addictions and problems or whatever causing it, like, I don't, like, I've met people with, like, way more fucked up lives I, than I have, and they're functional and they're fine. You know what I mean? It's like whenever somebody does a documentary on serial killers or something, I'm like, but there are lots of people who have had childhoods like that and they don't go on to do, you know what I mean? But um, there's probably a genetic component, but then it's like, well, is it genetic because you inherit this stuff or is it genetic because, you know, they they witnessed it from their parents and then their parents witnessed it from their parents and so on and so forth. So it's like a gen generational trauma, you know what I mean? And I really think that, like, A&E, like, shows like Intervention, shows like whatever, where... You know, any reality TV, like, even fucking American Idol, like, you're not auditioning with singing, you're auditioning with your, like, sad, tragic backstory, you know? People got really, really, and it, you know, it's a good and it's a bad thing. Like, it's good that we're seeing, like, people in all of their lives for what it's worth, and we're trying, like, I, I feel like it's us as a society, at least, like, it's definitely better than taking mentally ill people and shoving them all into an asylum and, like, torturing the crazy out of them or something or thinking that it's demons or some shit. Like, I think we're closer um, with saying that this is all relevant to trauma and not, like, I don't know, the four humors or whatever bullshit that they believed in back then, you know what I mean? So... Uh, my mom and how this all ties in with her. So I think the first and most important thing to remember about my mother is that she was born blue and um, they put her in the morgue like as soon as she was born. And I think that this is... Um, God damn it, there's fucking um again. I'm sorry. Anyway, and I, like, I'm making it any better pointing out when I say um. But my mom, she was born blue, and I think that this fucked up my grandparents. And I think that my grandparents would give my mother anything she wanted, whenever she wanted. And I think that my mother got extremely spoiled, and I think that she... Got everything handed to her. And I think she learned that being sick got her what she wanted. So she got really... I think she loved herself too much to be full-on eating disordered. Like, my dad, I'm pretty sure, had anorexia. Like, I'm 95% sure my dad had something going on. Like, he moved to Alaska and 
got up to over 300 pounds. Like, this is a story I've heard a lot. Uh, he got up to, like, 300 pounds, and then he became absolutely obsessed with running and kickboxing and stuff. Doctors told him to quit running because his stomach was caving in and he was, like, grossly underweight. But nobody made a correlation with an eating disorder because he was a very masculine man. But my mom, she she just milked being sick. Like, every time, every little infraction or something, she was always, like, nobody could be sicker than her. And if you, like, one time I uh, j fell off my, like, I was jumping around on my bed like a little asshole whenever I was nine years old. Like, I was, like, I was really young because I know I was still in elementary because I had to walk around elementary school with a sling. But I fell off and I broke my... Um, I don't know if I broke it or what because she never fucking took, she told everybody that she took me to, that she rushed me to the hospital in the middle of the night. She was like this big martyr or whatever. And I just remember being really confused. Like that's not, you screamed at me for like two hours until I cried myself to sleep and told me what a piece of shit I was for waking you up. Cause your eye hurt like some bullshit. Like <laughs> that's, that's my mom. Um, she's like to everybody else, she's a hero. She's so sick and she does the, all of this. And like her kids are just like such ungrateful pieces of shit. She's one of those. Um, I did it. I said, um, I'm sorry. I don't know what her deal with food was. There was a deal but it would be more on, like, the osfed Edno spectrum than, like, I don't know if any of these things are actually different, like, legit. I don't think that they're legit different illnesses. I think that they're different expressions of the same thing. And I don't know if I could, my parents, how all of this relates to me, my parents were extremely like I don't remember not knowing what an eating disorder was I don't remember food and stuff not being talked about in my house I, I don't like my in elementary school I was put on phenamine my mom went to two different counties got two different prescriptions of phenamine and she ordered some off of like the internet back in 2000 something and even in the 90s she was ordering she found out how to order phenamine and stuff off the internet like Edno's shit you know like that's something I would do today but um I wouldn't give them to my fucking kid though but yeah my mom my mom and my dad kept putting this idea in my head that my weight would fix like fixing my weight would fix everything I got really fat around um eight or nine years old I and I mean like this the, there are emotional components to it for sure like it gets worse as things happen to you like everything that I was dealing with that year I guess I just kind of turned to food for and I got up I I remember in elementary school I got up to like around 150 and uh by the time I went to junior high I was 160 and my parents flipped their shit they do not want us to be ugly they were on me about it like all of the conversations I had with my parents in my early years of life were like you better believe in God and you better stop fucking being fat and you know, we really didn't my both my parents especially my father uh, had a lot of good points too. I don't want to just shit on my parents because it's hard to be a parent. It's uh, especially back then. Nobody knew shit about mental health back in the nineties and stuff. Nobody knew shit about what was causing what nobody knew shit about. They, they, it was a different time, you know, but, and my parents did their best and I appreciate everything that they tried to do and I do think that they were they thought they were looking out for me I, I do think that they thought well being pretty is probably the only thing I'll ever have going for me if I fuck that up by being fat and having glasses and being um weird then I'm gonna have no chance at life like I, I really think in their heads for the most part they thought that they were doing what was best for me um 
uh, definitely towards my father's later years of life, uh, like right before he, maybe like two or three years before he died, I definitely started noticing, um, he kind of did a 360 and he, uh, maybe he noticed that I was, that something weird was going on with me. I don't know. He was a very intuitive person. He could pick up things like that pretty easily. And, um, he was a very, like, emotion dominant person. Like, if that makes any sense, like, he, he was very empathetic is what I'm trying to say. He was very good at picking up on stuff like that. It was just difficult to him, uh, to find out what was going on with us all of the time because he had to work a lot. He had to go on location for two weeks at a time and, um, stay there and still cracks on the road and stuff. He owned three businesses. He was, a, you know, he did his best. Um, I don't think that he understood anything that was going on with him. I, I think he saw it as like, you know, reaching some kind of nirvana or some bullshit. Like he was really into karate. He was really into like spiritualism and bullshit like that. So, um, which I think isn't uncommon, especially for like disorders that have no influence from like societal bullshit. Like, well, it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm, well, media is what I mean. Um, I think that eating disorders could either be influenced by like media stuff, but I also think like the Victorian fasting girls and stuff like that, I think, uh, were also eating disorders, but instead of like, oh my God, I have to look exactly like this model or I have to look like whatever. It was just like, oh my God, I have to be absolutely pure for God. You know, it's, it's the same thing, just